we hit the streets and the mountains to test out the new 2021 Acura TLX. It's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. There was a time not long ago when the sedan segment was a make or break proposition for automakers. But in the last few years, crossovers have come to dominate the space due to a level of comfort and practicality you just can't get in a sedan. Even so, automakers are still producing some of the best sedans they've ever built. One of our favorites, the Genesis G70, was an all-new offering just a couple years ago. Lexus has aggressively updated the IS300 for 2021 with major handling improvements. While Audi, BMW, and Mercedes added new tech and styling to attract the remaining buyers looking for a sporty luxury sedan. A shrinking market, it seems, has only made the segment even more competitive. And that brings us to the 2021 Acura TLX. With practical buyers moving to crossovers, the Acura team took advantage of the more boutique status of this class by making the new TLX even more impractical, on purpose. The new chassis is supercar wide, close to a Porsche Panamera in proportions. It also has a low roof line, which takes away second row space, but looks pretty good. But that's not all they've done. It also has an ultra rigid chassis, double wishbone front suspension, electro servo brakes, and better weight distribution to elevate the overall driving experience. It may have some supercar tech under there, but that doesn't mean it has a supercar price. As you see it here in SH All-Wheel Drive Advanced trim, you're looking at $48,800 US dollars, including delivery. The only upgrade here was the Phantom Violet paint, which added $500. Under the hood is a two liter four cylinder engine with direct injection and a turbo. It's good for up to 272 horses and 280 pound feet of torque. This is connected to a 10 speed automatic transmission and it powers all four wheels through Acura's fourth generation super handling all wheel drive system. EPA rates economy at 21 miles to the gallon in town and 29 on the highway. Trunk space is reasonable for the class at 13.5 cubic feet. Fold the second row down with easy pulls to fit even larger objects. Under the floor is a starter battery, which has been relocated for better weight distribution. I'm gonna be honest, it's a tight fit. Ooh, yeah, that is, that is not great. And this is a position that I would normally sit in this seat. So if you have a six foot one adult up front, it's gonna to be tough to put one in the second row. I do, however, get three stages seat warmers and a cup holder with integrated armrest. Okay. Getting in, the seat is very comfortable. I have a whole bunch of different adjustments I can make. I also have heating and ventilation. If I look at the wheel, the leather is just gorgeous and has this nice stitching on the inside. Uh, and it also has paddle shifters if I wanna row my own, because of course this is an automatic 10-speed transmission. The gauge cluster isn't as fancy as some other vehicles, like the, the latest Genesis, the G80, which has a holographic display. Yeah, we don't have that here. This is more traditional dials with a multifunction color display in the middle. But I do like the layout and it is very clear at conveying the information that I need. I also get a heads up display up there. And then over here is probably one of the better infotainment systems on the market. Now, not everybody likes it and I understand why. Some people, if you're gonna have a trackpad, you kinda wanna be able to endlessly scroll. This one, every position on the pad is relative to the position up on the display. What I mean by that is if I click top left, I'm gonna to click top left. I don't have to scroll, I can just put my finger there and all of a sudden it's top left, which in this case is navigation. Let's go ahead and try a navigation search. Let's go ahead and find, I just click down bottom left. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that, we'll do search. There was a shorter way to get there, but this still works. So at this point, I can draw a letter. Let's look for a Starbucks. Or I can just do voice command. Find the nearest Starbucks. 
Please make a selection by name or line number. Number one. Starting route to Starbucks. See, that's pretty easy. That works well. And it gives me a lot of different options so I can do it whichever way I prefer. To control the transmission are the buttons that Acura introduced several years ago and have since trickled down to even some Hondas. I actually like this system. The P, R, N, D are in the natural position. Plus you have to pull for the reverse. It really makes a lot of sense. Yeah, overall, aside from the lack of space in the second row and just a normal sunroof, which that should be panorama at this point, I really like this interior. I love the sculpting. The materials are quite nice. Even this wood grain, it just looks really great. That's kind of this mocha interior. So if you're going to compare this to like even a Mercedes, the Mercedes system, I think, is a it's a generally nicer setup. There's something about this that I just like. It's kind of a little bit more dynamic looking in the shapes and the materials. Um, where especially with even the Mercedes, you have to spend a lot of money to get those upper end trims. This one at you know mid 40s, I think this is just really nice. OK, let's go ahead and see how it drives. Back in 2011, for the Discovery Channel pilot that we shot for Driving Sports TV, uh, we did an epic road trip of the Acura TL versus the Audi S4 versus the Mitsubishi Evo. And in that video, spoiler alert, the TL1, it was just a fantastic V6 with a quick shifting six speed manual transmission. And especially on the Mary Hill Loops Road, it just did an amazing job. Today, we're driving the TLX, and the TLX is basically a mishmash of the old TSX and the larger TL, hence TLX. Post a comment below, what's the benefit of having a car that's bigger than a compact but smaller than, um, you know, a midsize? Because that second row, as we saw earlier, yeah, it's not very big, so you're not really gaining space back there. And then up here, it's good. I have lots of space to work with, but I wouldn't say it's exceptional in terms of space usage. This center console takes up a lot of room, but I think the trade-off is worth it up here at least. The TLX here is designed not just for the TLX we're driving today. This chassis is also designed for the Type S, which will come out next year, uh, probably around spring. This one is equipped with, of course, a four cylinder, two liter turbo, putting out 272 horsepower to all four wheels with SH all wheel drive uh, through a 10 speed automatic transmission. The Type S is gonna have a turbocharged V6. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So this is kind of a preview. It's kind of an amuse bouche uh, of what we will get in the future. I've always really liked Acura vehicles. They, they've just done a great job of, you know, making something that's fun to drive, yet also is as reliable as a Japanese car is expected to be. They're a great combination of features and especially the engines. Honda just makes some fantastic engines. it's quick but that it's kind of lacking something I mean other than a manual transmission which would be really nice to have combined with this engine but it's 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 lacking the resoluteness of like a twin clutch the the, the power it's like the 10 speed it's it's shifting like an Odyssey minivan and yeah that probably pays dividends in MPGs but it doesn't pay dividends in fun. And a car like the TLX, it needs to be fun. And it is kind of lacking in that department. Front and center, the Acura is really about its dynamic modes. We have several to play with here, uh, including comfort, normal, and sport. Now, of particular Notice with this vehicle is because it's the advanced model, that means it has the adaptive suspension, which means that sport mode actually does tighten up the suspension. Now, if you want to say have 
a lethargic throttle yet tight suspension, you can have that option with an individual setting, which you can also set up in the dynamic mode control system. Oh, I do love this all-wheel drive system. What you'll notice is as we go around the corner, it'll actually put more power to the outside wheel. And it uses that power to create rotation in the vehicle. It's kind of like all-wheeled steering without all of the fussy mechanicals needed to actually turn the wheels. By adding more torque to the outside wheel, it helps with that rotation. And not just in dry conditions, but in slippery ones as well. Okay, let's try a zero to 60 here. This is a mostly level surface. We do a lot of zero to 60s here to keep it kind of comparable. Let's turn off auto start stop. I have my brake pedal on full and I'm actually gonna do a pseudo launch control. Uh, let's turn off traction control, hold that down. Um, full brake on, full gas on, three, two, one, go. 40, 50, and 60. So we're looking at 5.96 0 to 60 with a 2.25 on the 0 to 30 brake, which is pretty good. I mean, all things considered, tires aren't great, it's raining out, uh, it's a two liter turbo engine. Um, those are some pretty good numbers, I think. Now that we're on the freeway, we can test out the adaptive cruise control system. Now it's a little moist out, but it's not too bad. Let me go ahead and turn it on. I'm going to pace the vehicle in front of me, I'm gonna set the speed, and then I'm gonna hit one more button, which is the lane detect, which will also provide lane centering. Once the wheel goes green in the uh, little display there, both in the heads up and in the main, I just basically can let go. I'm not really confident in this yet though, so let's see. How's it gonna do? Is it gonna straighten us out? Ooh, pretty good. Even though it's a little rainy out, See, we're coming into a corner. Is it going to turn? It's telling me to put my hands on the wheel. Yeah, doing a solid job there. Tracking dead center, even in the rain. Nicely done. Yeah, I mean, on the freeway, it's a little loud. I can hear a lot of the road going on underneath me, uh, even though it does have the adaptive suspension and I am in the softest setting. Uh, these tires are just loud, and it's mostly the tires that I'm hearing right now. Um, the problem is these, uh, uh, the primacies, they're just the most mediocre middle of the road tire. The only thing they're good at is that they have a long wear. They will last a very long time, but they aren't good at performance. They aren't good at road noise. They aren't good at pretty much anything. So we're gonna head deeper into the mountains. We're probably not gonna find snow, but we're gonna look. But if we find some snow, then we can test it with this SH all wheel drive system. SH all-wheel drive stands for super handling all-wheel drive. This is one of the more advanced all-wheel drive systems you can get on the market. And I love that they offer it in a sedan like this. The benefit of this system is though, even though it's a front wheel drive transverse mounted engine, it actually provides a lot of power to the back and also will vector power to the outside rear wheel to help with rotation in the corners. This is a solid system easily on par with anything from Subaru to Audi to Mercedes. In fact, I'd say it's better than the Mercedes system. I'm not so sure about being better than Audi's system though. Funny fact, SH all wheel drive in its early days actually had some stuff that was pioneering over Audi's Quattro system. Eventually, like a uh, yaw response, Audi eventually added that to Quattro to be more competitive with SH all wheel drive. That's how good this system is but it's not cheap and it is kind of heavy. This one's using the Gen 4 system, which we first reviewed on the RDX. If you wanna learn more about how this system works, I kind of go into more detail with it in that review. Uh, here, we just need to know that it is a performance oriented all wheel drive system and it is really good at providing that rotation in the corners as well as providing power and slip control when you need it.
Now we are basically in the ice. Let's see how well SH all-wheel drive can get us out of this condition. Uh, I'm in normal drive. Traction control is turned on. Now let's see how it does. Just add a little throttle. Ooh, lots of power to the back. It automatically detects that I need power back there. And away we go. Dude, SH all-wheel drive is amazing. Let's try that again the other way. Back into the ice there. Now, ground clearance is a serious issue with this vehicle. It just does not have a lot because, of course, it's a sports sedan. So if you're going up to a mountain pass or to a ski lodge, you might run into issues simply because of clearance. However, so long as the wheels can touch the ground, this is a system that can get you pretty much anywhere. Let's stop. You know what? This time I'm going to turn traction control off and we'll see how the system changes its response. Okay, VSA is off, throttle in, front power, front power, rear power, rear power, boom. No problem at all. SH all wheel drive, one of the best. When you buy a sports sedan, you're really not expecting to, you know, take it off-roading, overlanding, anything like that. However, you might still want to go to ski lifts and you might still want to go to the beach. So here's some sand. Let's see how it does. I'm going to stop halfway up. Full disclosure, this has been driven over a few times, so it's not completely loose sand. So I have traction control on, I have it in comfort mode, I have the transmission regular drive, and let's floor it and see what it does. No problem, man, no problem. In spite of America's waning interest in sports sedans, this new TLX is an impressive entry in the segment. But if you want to get the most out of it, make sure you budget some new season appropriate rubber as soon as it's off the lot. If you like what you see here, but you want even more power and precision, the Type S variant is confirmed for 2021. You can bet we'll bring you a first drive of that car as soon as we can get behind the wheel. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. We'll see you again right here next week. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe, leave a comment, tell us what do you think. Is this the best choice in the class, or would you rather go with a BMW or an Audi? Post a comment below. As always, I'm Ryan Douthit for Driving Sports TV. We'll see you again next week. Okay, I look like Luke Skywalker. Stay on target. Luke, use the force. Hold you on. Okay, enough of that. Luke, you switched your targeting computer on. I'm okay. Nerd alert. <laughs>